So this video is about the ICF core competencies and how they relate to the body in coaching. So the International Coach Federation um, is one of the main governing bodies for coaching in the world today. There's one or two others, but the ICF is often considered um, one of the best and certainly um, sets certain standards, gives certain qualifications like master coach to various people. Um, so it's quite highly thought of. Now the ICF have a list of what they call core competencies. So this is the stuff you're meant to learn to be a coach. Um, in an attempt to raise the standards of coaching around the world, they've, they've laid out, okay, here's the stuff you really should know as a coach. This has been put together by some very senior coaches from all around the world over the years. So let's look at these main components of coaching as the ICF outlines and say, okay, how does the body apply to these? Let's look at the first two, so ethics and the coaching agreement. So um, in some ways these, you might think, well, what's the body got to do with ethics? Well, values and ethics, what we, what we believe to be right and whether we have the capacity to follow through on that uh, isn't just a mental thing. I mean, we all know the right thing to do. But it's like, do you have the body that can really th follow through on that? Do you have the sense of backbone, we might say, yeah? So this is an embodied capacity right there. Just telling people a set of ethics um, alone isn't enough unless you're giving them the ability to grow where they need to grow um, through the body uh, into, that, into their values and ethics. The same with establishing and coaching agreements. This is something you do right up front when really coaching is, okay, what's the agreement of what we're gonna do? Let's, let's talk about that so we know what's happening, you and the client. Again, it's a, a coach's embodied capacities there are really important. Does someone have the capacity to say clearly what they would like or to set a boundary? You know? So um, how we set those boundaries is absolutely important. So let's say we have a standard that uh, if a site client shows up more than 10 minutes late for a session, then the client session doesn't happen. Or if a client misses a session without informing you 48 hours prior, that session is still billed. So that would be a you know, fairly common kind of standard one might have that one would lay out in this agreement. But actually having the embodiment to follow through on that, to, uh, to lay it out clearly at the start, and then to follow through those sense of boundaries. Um, if that's not there, then on an embodied level, the coach is gonna be picking up on that. Okay, the next two competencies about co-creating the coaching relationship. So the body here is vitally important. If we're gonna build trust with a client, it's really important we embody that so we can engender it. Um, Sometimes I think of sort of least trustworthy embodiment like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. You know, he has that um, really untrustworthy lack of spine, uh, lack of ground and base and back. So these are embodied capacities. Of course, yes, reliability is also in there. But in the first instance, when a coach meets you, they don't know if you're reliable. Yeah? They only know if you're, you're sincere. So um, that really comes across through the body. Again, in terms of building intimacy, um, this isn't just about what we say. Building that connection and intimacy with a client is really about the subtle embodied communication. So if you're not picking up on little signals that via the body, um, you're going to miss a lot and that, that intimacy won't be there. Okay, next one, big one, coaching presence. So this is nearly all embodied as far as I'm concerned. Um, the presence one has as a coach comes from the practices one has done, the embodiment one has built through time and hard work. Absolutely essential for any coach. When a coach sells their services, what they're really selling is themselves. When a client looks at you, a potential client, they, they're asking themselves the question, is this person someone I can trust? Is this person someone that's gonna get results? And that is coming across through that coaching presence. Next, let's look at the aspects of communication that a coach needs to be schooled in. So they need to listen, they need to actually be able to give direct feedback, yeah? That might look like a challenge. And they will need to ask powerful questions. So these are some of the key elements of communication and coaching. So again, guess what? They're embodied. Uh, the capacity to receive, we might call it more yin capacity, is a certain body, a certain way of being. The balance to that, that more direct, more yang communication, is a different kind of body. Most coaches who haven't done embodied work, habitually they're, they're leaning one way or the other, yeah? and they don't have the, the range to change, which is a shame because both of those things are really, really necessary. Um, powerful questioning involves both of those two elements, for example. It's the ability to receive and intuit and then to go for it. So the last set of capabilities, um, awareness. So what are you building awareness of, right? It's not just the thoughts, the body, the emotions, the whole back. So again, at least partially an embodied skill is building awareness as to how the client is. Similarly, awareness is great, but we don't actually shift things without practices. Uh, and again, practice through the body, have this stickability, this, um, it's not just theory, right? When we're doing an embodied practice, we're getting something in our bones. Um, there's a saying which is knowledge is just a rumor till it's in the flesh. 
managing accountability, um, similar to building the coaching agreement, that ability to hold boundaries, to challenge, to offer support where needed. Um, these capacities are about the embodied self of who the coach is, not just what books they've read. So there you have it, the um, ICF coaching competencies. They're not just a theory, they're not just a um, set of tricks one learns from a book. These are actually ways of being, and that means they involve the body.